Hey folks, it's been a nice warm day today and uh, we're going to talk about it, irrigation and mulching our trees. You see this is our little orchard, we've sort of come into it after the wet season to try and cut down all the tall grass and we're, I suppose, 50% of the way through it. Still got a lot to do, but more importantly, the grass we can get rid of, it's the, uh, it's the trees that we don't want to lose. Now, we have got a lot of weed growing in here and that's fine, we can deal with that, that's easily controlled, but we can't fix the tree if it dehydrates and goes backwards. Now, I just want to dig down below here and show you the moisture. Irrigation is off, it hasn't been turned on for nine months, at least nine months. We have not turned this on and we've had 24, 25 degree weather today. Look at the moisture in that. That is moist as. It's only rained, you know, when was the last rainfall? Have a look at the forecast, see what we had in the past. That doesn't need any irrigation. And I was thinking about it today and I thought, wow, if I have to turn the irrigation on here, I'm in trouble because that means our mulch isn't working. But as you can see, it is as moist as it needs to be. There is a drip system underneath here. And no, it's not turned on because it's a manual timer. I'm just thinking about it just in case there is a battery operated one. No, it's actually off. There's no ir irrigation at all uh, turned on. So these trees are doing mighty fine. So if you haven't mulched your trees, really, you've got to get out there and start mulching, especially now with the warm weather coming in. We've got a 27 degree day forecast today. And if you don't have the mulch down or irrigation down for your trees, they're going to struggle. Look, even if you put irrigation down and you don't mulch on top, you're defeating the purpose. And that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to take you around to the dam to do what we're going to do with those trees. So just going to load up some more mulch here. See how dry it is on top? I know many of you already understand that the purpose of mulch and how it works, but just in case some of you have never used mulch in your garden bed before, and you like to see it pristine. It's this, this colour there, it's bleached from the sunlight, but just below the surface, even here. Look, look how moist, it's full of moisture. It's got moisture in it, it's hot. Well, not hot, but it's warm, so the microbes are active. They're actually breaking it down. So you need to mulch your garden beds, whether it's small plants, um, especially small plants, because they'll need it more, they dry up a lot quicker. Or tall plants, get some mulch onto them. Just finish filling up. The barren will go down to the dam. These are the trees we planted a few months ago. I can't remember exactly when. Um, we've only watered them twice, so we've been lucky with a bit of rainfall. And I reckon many of you, you nutcase. Are you right? Go. Where is it? Go. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, we irrigated these just now. We've just put the irrigation, it's a drip system. Now we're going to bury it over here, but I've allowed it to be continuous all the way through. Uh, when we do irrigate plants, don't always think about just watering where the trunk is, like over here, for example. Now, you know, all right, the ripple's under here, but as the tree grows, it's going to grow bigger roots, it's going to spread out. So if you focus and concentrate only watering over where the trunk is, you're never really going to establish a strong root system or strong foundation for your tree. And more importantly, if you wait for the hot weather to come and you haven't irrigated or mulched, that's being very reactive. And we don't want to be reactive with anything in our life. We want to be proactive. And sometimes when you do things like that, it's a little bit late. So nine times out of 10, I dare say that if you become reactive with mulching, irrigating, spraying, and you see the problem, it's a bit late by then. So try and fix it like we are now before the hot weather comes. Put your drip system down put your mulch on top, check that the irrigation's working well, and don't just irrigate around the root zone where the trunk is. Irrigate past there, make the roots grow out by giving it more moisture everywhere else. And sometimes it's better to not actually irrigate over the roots, but rather outside it. So create a big ring if you like. I can't do it here. We've just rolled, well I can, but I'm not going to because I've rolled out 100 metres of drip system and we're about two thirds of the way there. So I need another 50 metres or so to, to get to the end. So I'm not going to bother building rings around it, but rather have a continuous line all the way through for my purpose. And we get a lot of crosswinds here on a high windy days, which makes it pretty difficult. But look, it's alive. It's got growth on it. It's fine. The maples have all taken off. The most, the one that's struggling the most out of all the maple varieties we got here is the flamingo there. 
and you can see that's struggling because the soil's gone hard. It's pushing buds everywhere. You can see this bud swell. We've got a little bit of die back up here, which, you know, in, in, in the whole scheme of things, that's nothing to worry about. We can clean that up. But just under here, because we've been mowing, look at the soil. It's dry. It's now at borderline of survival. If we don't do something about this, it won't survive summer, that's for sure. So we're going to irrigate it now. I haven't joined it on the end. I'm going to do that now, test it, and then dump a heap of mulch over the top. And hopefully we get a rain where they're predicting Thursday or Friday, some, some rainfall. That'll hydrate the whole area, and that'll keep it going for at least a good, I won't say a month, at least two weeks, if the weather um, warms up again. Let's get to work. holding the wrong end. Yeah, I've, I think I've laid about four or five kilometres of irrigation drip system. I suppose, I suppose, if you say farmland, that's nothing, because, you know, we're, we're not doing, you know, we're not, we're not a production here, we're, we're a hobby farm. We're just having some fun. So five kilometres of irrigation just to, to keep plants alive, just to keep plants alive. Hey, look, listen to me. Of course I want to keep plants alive. What's the purpose of uh, growing plants if you're not going to keep them alive? I mean, look at the site. Why would you want? Why would you? Why wouldn't you? See, I can't even speak anymore. Why wouldn't you want to keep your plants alive? This is what it's all about: peaceful tranquility and, and being grounded, eh, Kara? This is the life. See any humans? Hey, good. This is a young tree, so we need to get it a little bit closer at the beginning. And I know I said to keep your irrigation as far as possible, but look at this. We're on a hillside here, or the bank of a dam. So this is the dry spot in the property. Look at it, it's crusted over super hard. A bit of high wind and warm weather, it's gone. So the irrigation has to be working, is it? It's dripping, look at that. Now we've got that dripping, we still haven't tied the end off. And we do that purposely so we can get it to flush through. Oh, look at this, it's beautiful. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 meters short. And this is the other sensation that looks like it's going to heaven. It's really gone backwards. It's discolored completely, and I'm really worried about this one. Now, we've still got a bit of life in it, but the discoloration on the branches is worrying, so I'm just going to cut it back just a little bit more. Oh, it sounds like bamboo sticks, the way it's cutting. It's still moist. Not as much as I'd like it to be, but considering we've ignored them, well, not purposely, that's for sure. If you've got dying back, or something that's struggling, folks, that means the roots aren't doing well, cut it back. The roots can't maintain or sustain the growth on top. And this is the flushing, so let's irrigate this one. There's a big cavity in the middle from the shrinkage. The soil's compacted. Now, I've filled it up, it's starting to overflow, but look, it's sinking in back in again. Let's see if we can hydrate this. This needs a, a hell of a lot of water, but not all at once like now. I'm going to need to hydrate this entire area. Just watch this, how it sinks in now. Yep, beautiful. Top it up again. I'm going to hydrate this entire area by looping it around like this. How many holes have we got here? We've got one, two, three. That's okay. We'll just fold this over. And go and check your timers. If you've got timers, battery operator timers, folks, make sure you've got them updated or change the batteries because they'll be flat. If you haven't used them for nine months or a year, they will be flat. Now the irrigation like this for the first time, folks, if you're turning it on, one hour is simply not enough to hydrate an area, especially this big that I have here. Even in a small veggie garden, you want to make sure it dissipates everywhere. And soils like a sponge, once it starts to hydrate, it will transpire across, or you know, spread through itself, uh, through the, uh, the whole layers of the, of the ground. But until that happens, you really got to make sure you keep your trees hydrated. Sometimes you might have to just top them up with a, a watering can or a hose just to get them going. But now we can see the mulch. Sorry, we can see that the irrigation's working. We can mulch on top. And how much mulch do we put? Well, I'm going to have four inches. Five inches is pretty good as long as it's not touching the trunk. So you can see how I'm going to just mound it up around it like that. But nothing like you see at the uh, nature strips. Well, there you go, folks. Irrigate, hydrate, 
mulch your garden beds and obviously compost your trees as well if you haven't done so and prove back any dieback on your plants check out our website it is a public holiday today and i think our buy one get one free with those bonus discounts ends midnight tonight great deals great specials for all of you to enjoy and take advantage to use in your garden and have a thriving garden hopefully better than mine one too from eva silly maresi